Hashtag Trending is brought to you with the generous support of Zoho Canada. We thank them for making it possible to bring you this type of content. Zoho has a unique and powerful suite to transform the way you work. It's designed for businesses of all sizes and built by a company that values your privacy. Visit them at Zoho.com. Half of Dell's U.S. staff reject the return to office mandate. SoftBank plans to use AI to calm angry customer voices. Ferrari ditches in-car navigation as phones take over. And Apple might be admitting there's a limit to what people will pay. All this and more on the Take This and Shove It edition of Hashtag Trending. I'm your host, Jim Love. Let's get into it. Dell's push to get employees back to the office is facing major resistance. New internal data shows nearly half of the tech giant's full-time U.S. workforce has opted to stay fully remote rather than return to the offices under a new hybrid policy introduced in February. Those choosing to keep working from home are ineligible for promotions or transfers under Dell's controversial return to office rules, yet for many, the benefits of remote work are too good to give up, despite the career limitations. Employees cited saving money on commuting, gaining flexibility for personal lives, and lacking a nearby office to return to. Some noted their global teams are spread across multiple sites anyway. And while hybrid workers must log at least three office days weekly tracked by a color-coded system, several Dell staffers described empty office scenes since the policy began. Some senior employees dismissed the no-promotion threat as meaningless if they've already risen as far as they've desired to go. And some felt there were few options for promotion anyway. I'm not picking on Dell, but is anybody out there asking, how's this RTO thing working out for you so far? In the latest sign of smartphones winning out over aging in-vehicle technologies, Ferrari is dropping built-in navigation from its cars. The Italian automaker says it's eliminating the native mapping feature going forward as phone mirroring through Android Auto and Apple CarPlay has become the most user-friendly possibility. According to Ferrari's head of product marketing, Emmanuel Carando, integrated nav systems quickly become outdated compared to frequently updated smartphone mapping apps like Google Maps. Over-the-air updates exist for in-car nav, but they don't happen nearly as frequently. Corando admits phones with real-time traffic data and frequently refreshed maps have made Ferrari's integrated systems obsolete. Setting destinations and getting routing guidance is often easier through familiar phone interfaces versus something clunky in an automotive system. The decision makes Ferrari one of the first major automakers to fully ditch native navigation in favor of smartphone mirroring. While controversial, it underscores how our phones have overshadowed many integrated technologies baked into modern cars. Other automakers are expected to follow the trend as drivers show a clear preference for the seamless phone integration offered by systems like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay over aging proprietary nav systems. Apple has suspended development on a second-generation Vision Pro headset to singularly focus on creating more affordable mixed-reality headsets, according to a new report from The Information. Initially, Apple was believed to be working on dividing its Vision lineup into high-end Pro and lower-cost standard models, reassigning employees to a cheaper alternative codenamed N109. The goal with N109 is to release a headset priced around the cost of a high-end iPhone, about $1,600 US. But finding ways to reduce cost without sacrificing too many features has proven challenging, likely pushing the target launch beyond the revised 2025 timeline. One Vision Pro supplier has already cut production by 50% after Apple forecast weaker demand, suggesting no more than 500,000 units have been shipped this year with modest plans ahead. While development on Vision Pro 2 is paused for now, the report notes Apple could resume the project later. But the near-term priority is clear, delivering a more accessible mixed-reality experience to expand beyond the pro market's high barrier to entry. And Japanese telecom giant SoftBank is developing AI technology that will modify the voices of angry customers to sound calmer during calls with service reps. The AI analyzes the vocal characteristics like pitch and tone and alters them in real time to reduce hostility. SoftBank trained the system on over 10,000 voices, sampling from actors expressing different emotions. When an irate customer calls in, the AI will process their speech and adjust it to sound less threatening 
though still conveying some audible frustration. The goal is to reduce harassment and psychological stress on call center staff dealing with verbally abusive customers, an issue plaguing service industries. One former operator recalled, customers would call me vile names, but we were trained not to hang up no matter how degrading it got. While SoftBank hopes the tech creates a safer work environment by March 2026, some question if masking legitimate anger is the right solution. As one Reddit commentator put it, if you have so many angry customers affecting employees' mental health, address the reasons for the anger instead of pretending it doesn't exist. And that's our show for today. Hashtag Trending goes to air five days a week with a daily news show and a weekend interview show we call the Weekend Edition. Show notes are at technewsday.ca or .com. Either one works. We love your comments. Contact me at editorial at technewsday.ca. I'm your host, Jim Love. Have a thrilling Thursday.